Good morning, interweb. Let's world build. Solar calendars track the sun, and lunar calendars track the moon. A calendar that does both of these things at the same time is called a lunisolar calendar, aka the one true calendar. Like the Chinese or Hebrew calendars, lunisolar calendars are great because they track more things, and thus give us more information. But as a result they are harder to compute and necessarily involve leap months. That is, leap months in a sense that every couple of years they require an entire additional month to be added to the year. Like the Hebrew calendar follows a 19 year cycle, called the Metonic cycle, where years 3, 6, 8, 11, 14, 17 and 19 are so called embolismic years, years containing that additional 13th month, and the other, ordinary years, contain the regular 12 months. Now it's worth pointing out that a perfect system, one where everything divides neatly into everything else, would produce a de facto lunisolar calendar. Everything can be easily tracked all at once. So our build method will be to make our demo system a perfect system, and then mess it up slightly to make it seem more realistic. To achieve this we're going to start by creating a whole number of months in the year by ever so slightly moving our moon. Spreadsheet time! You know the drill. Planet's orbital period goes here, and the lunar period goes here. Now as things stand there will be roughly 8.37 months per year. Let's get rid of that decimal and just call it 8 months. Scroll down to the lunisolar section and put 8 in here. This will move the moon to compensate. Next up we need to find a local day length that will divide both the year and the month evenly. Because remember we want to track both values at once. Here's how it's done. Compare the two values and, if needed, add on trailing zeros to make the values like decimals. That is decimals that have the same number of decimal places after the point. Now get rid of that point and then ask Wolfram Alpha what the common divisors of these values are. This list, these are our day lengths. All we need to do is throw one of these into the spreadsheet and reintroduce the decimal point wherever it suits. Let's use this guy. Into the spreadsheet he goes and after a bit of trial and error it turns out that both a 3.3891337 earth hour day and a 33.8913375 earth hour day would work. But the latter is obviously the better option as it's way more earth like. And there you have it. Calendar done. 192 local days in the year divided into 8 24 day months which will probably be divided into four six day weeks, one week per moon phase, and the local day will be 33.8913375 earth hours long. Everything is tracked all at once, so loony solar calendar done. But real life ain't this perfect. Let's introduce some calendar drift, shall we? Let's say we want a leap month every two years. Adding 0.5 to here means that every two years we'll have to add on an entire additional month. Now we're going to have to readjust our day length to divide evenly into our new values, but unfortunately most of the time this won't be possible. If they don't divide each other evenly then a third value won't do so either, or at least not in a manner that's useful to us. So, and I apologize for everything you're about to experience, we're going to need to brute force this mofo one decimal place at a time until we come up with two workable year and month values. I usually start by cycling through the day lengths and seeing if any friendly decimal values crop up. At 18 earth hours we can see that the values are tending towards 0.5, which is nice. So now I'm going to go through this one decimal place at a time and see can I force all of this nonsense as close as possible to 0.5. And I can. A local day of this will give me a 361.25 and change local day year and a 42.5 and change local day month. Which worked out surprisingly well especially seeing as we can functionally ignore those last decimal places. They represent drifts on the order of one day per 10 million or 100 million years. Super super ignorable. Let's see how this plays out. Year 1. Because our month will drift one day every second month, 
we're going to need to alternate between 42 and 43 local days per month. So eight months of alternating duration gives us 340 local days, which is really accurate given that the actual number of days that have passed is 340 plus change. But we're a good bit short of the solar year. Not to worry, on to year two. We continue with the alteration, but this time for nine months, which amounts to a rolling total of 722 local days. And again, it's really accurate versus the actual number of days that have passed. And because of the additional leap month, we're spot on with the rolling solar year total. And this cycle just loops. Year three will be like year one and year four will be like year two. Of course, this isn't the only solution. Here we primarily follow the moon. But what happens if we primarily follow the star? Year one, eight months of 42 local days gives us a 336 local day year, four days short of reality. So we can put in a special intercalary period at the end to align things. Again, note that we are short of the solar year. Year two, nine months of 42 local days gives us a rolling total of 718 local days. But again, we're four days short of reality. Adding in the leap month and another special period realigns us with the rolling solar year total. Year three is a repetition of year one and year four is a repetition of year two, except we're missing one day. We need to add another day onto our special period. Why? Because a solar year drifts one day every four years and boom, everything is perfectly aligned and this four year cycle will just loop endlessly. So depending on which bodies you primarily track, you'll end up with a different scheme of leap days, doled out on either the month level or the year level. But either way, you'll end up with the same result. The moon and the star would align over time. We can employ a similar system with the weeks. 42 days divided by four is 10.5, meaning every second week we'll need an extra day if we want to accurately track the phases of the moon, one phase per week. So we could do a week scheme of 10, 11, 10, and 11 local days, or 10, 10, 10, 10, plus a two day special period. So there you go, how to create a loony solar calendar for your fictional planet done, with all its messy leap days and months. Now, with regards to hours, minutes, and seconds, my go-to, take the local day, just call it 24 hours, 60 minutes, 60 seconds, redefine what those words mean, and just don't tell anyone about it, doesn't really work here. 18-ish hours is so far removed from a standard Earth day that this redefinition will become problematic. So we're going to need to come up with our own breakdown of time. Like our system of base 24 hours and base 60 everything else is essentially historical legacy code. There's no reason why a culture couldn't just adopt a different set of bases. Like maybe our culture breaks its days into 12 hours, 36 minutes per hour and 48 seconds per minute. Who knows? Just make sure that the system you choose is practical and there are cultural reasons for the bases you choose. Pro tip though, go with highly composite bases. Links in the doobie doo. That way you'll have lots of options when it comes to subdivisions of time. Maybe consider using a unified base system. The French tried this with their base 10 French revolutionary time. 10 hours in a day, 100 minutes per hour and 100 seconds per minute and so on, which is great. And also terrible. Great because yay metric system, but terrible because they didn't listen to my pro tip. Use highly composite bases. Now back when clocks were made out of water or candles or sticks in the ground, the hour was as accurate as things were going to get. For the most part, no minutes or seconds. And everyone was kind of okay with this. Everyday life still marched on. Like do hobbits even need seconds or minutes? Maybe robots, need something more than seconds. Ents would probably function on the order of years. The granularity of your timekeeping system should be linked to your culture, primarily its tech level. Added to that, the concept of standardized units of time is a relatively modern one. Like as late as the middle ages, the length of an hour was the amount of time between sunrise and sunset divided by 12, regardless of season. So a summer hour would be longer than a winter hour. And yet everyone was okay with this. Everyday life marched on. Now that all said, my favorite system is this. The one true base for the one true calendar.
Good morning Interweb, I have nothing to follow up from the last video so let's do a bit of real time follow up on this video. If you want to accurately track lunar phases you need to do two things. You need to construct weeks based off the lunar period and you need to evenly disperse throughout the year any intercalary days you may have. Lunar phase tracking is contingent on these two elements and I'm not entirely sure that came across in the main video in the week building section so I just want to call it out here to make sure we're all square. That said this is the last of the calendar building videos. Don't worry this hasn't become a calendar building YouTube channel. The next video will almost certainly be a conlang video. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll enjoy the next video and thank you so much for watching. Edgar out.